In this video, we will see how you can use extremum seeking control to optimize braking torque uh, for an anti lock braking system and minimize stopping distance. To start, let's look at how an anti lock braking system works conceptually. In a vehicle, the frictional force acting on the circumference of the tire is proportional to the coefficient of friction. This coefficient of friction has a maximum for a low non-zero wheel slip value and decreases as the slip increases. During hard braking conditions, the anti-lock braking system will try to maximize this friction coefficient by adjusting the braking torque to maintain a desirable wheel slip. This will help the vehicle come to a control stop by preventing the wheels from locking out. In this subsystem, we simulate the braking characteristics of a vehicle with an anti-lock braking system. It takes in a value of the desired wheel slip and modulates the braking torque to achieve that wheel slip. Inside the subsystem, we can visualize the velocity of the vehicle and the wheel as well as the distance traveled by the vehicle while braking. Also modeled are the friction coefficient between the road and the tire surface and the achieved wheel slip calculated by this expression. First, let's consider the case of hard braking without the presence of an anti-lock braking system. This would cause the wheels to lock out, meaning the wheel slip becomes one. We will induce a wheel lockout by setting the desired wheel slip to the anti-lock braking system to one with this constant block here. The simulation has been run for this scenario and here you can see that the wheel's angular velocity rapidly reduces to zero, meaning the wheel is starting to slip on the ground. The vehicle velocity slowly reduces and it takes about 180 meters and uh, 12 seconds for the vehicle to come to a stop from an initial velocity of around 35 meters per second. Now let's consider the case when the anti-lock braking system is enabled. We will use extremum seeking control to find the desired wheel slip that the anti-lock braking system should achieve to maximize the friction coefficient characteristic and in turn minimize the stopping distance. We will make use of the extremum seeking control block introduced in Simulink Control Design of R2021A. This block provides a model-free real-time adaptive control approach for automatically computing optimal control parameters that maximize a static or dynamic objective function. It tracks the maximum of the objective function by modulating, otherwise perturbing the parameter being optimized with sinusoidal signals, demodulating the resulting perturbed objective function, and updating the parameter value by integrating the demodulated signal. For this example, the input to this block would be the objective function, that is the friction coefficient that we would like to maximize, and the output would be the optimal control input to the anti-lock braking system, that is the desired wheel slip. The block dialog of this block shows how the controller is designed and lets us set the parameters of the extremum seeking controller. Under parameters, we will set the number of parameters to be tuned to be one, since we are only tuning the desired wheel slip. Now, we need to provide a good initial condition for the desired wheel slip so that the controller can converge to an optimum value we will pick this initial slip to be 0.15. For the frequency of the modulation and demodulation signals, we need to choose a frequency lower than the frequencies of the important system dynamics. Let us set this to 0.7 radians per second. Next, the learning rate controls the rate at which the block updates the slip parameters. We will set this gain to 0.3. Now the product of the modulation and the demodulation signals along with the learning rate controls the convergence speed for the algorithm. For most applications, the demodulation amplitude is much larger than the modulation amplitude. 
So for this application, we'll set this to 1 and 0 0.02 respectively. Next, let's specify the phases of the modulation and demodulation signals. For this application, the demodulation phase phi1 and the modulation phase phi2 are set as pi by 2 and 0. For your applications, set phi1 and phi2 such that the cosine of uh, phi1 minus phi2 is greater than 0. Now we'll enable the high pass filter to remove any signal bias from the friction coefficient objective function before demodulation. We can also enable the low pass filter to remove high frequency components from the demodulated signals before the update of the slip parameter. We will specify these cutoff frequencies for the high and low pass filters to be 0 0.5 and 1 radians per second. Click OK to finish parameterizing the XTMM Seeking controller. Now let's rerun the simulation for hard braking to stop the vehicle. Throughout the braking event, the XTMM Seeking controller will find the desired wheel slip that will maximize the friction coefficient between the tire and the road surface. This desired slip is then passed to the anti-lock braking subsystem which modulates the braking torque to achieve this slip. Let's now compare the values of the friction coefficient objective function with and without the anti-lock braking system. Here we see that the extremum seeking control tracks the maximum of the friction coefficient characteristic at 0 0.6. This brings about maximum deceleration and a shorter stopping distance of 110 meters in just over 6 seconds as we see here, compared to the scenario where anti-lock braking was uh, disabled. There it took the vehicle 180 meters and 12 seconds to stop. Also with the anti-lock braking system, the wheel angular velocity gradually reduced to zero along with the vehicle velocity indicating that the wheels did not lock up during the braking event. So in summary, we saw how we can use the extremum seeking controller block to optimize the braking performance of an anti-lock braking system by maximizing the friction coefficient between the road and the tire surface. Further, you can also generate C or C++ code from this block and deploy it to hardware allowing you to test and integrate your controller design on hardware.